letting me be here, and more importantly, thank you all for being here and being engaged in this. The fact that there are so many people in this room right now is a very good sign, both for Malaysia and for the rest of the world in the coming years. Um, I, I know we're a little behind schedule, so I will try to catch us up. Uh, I just want to tell, basically, a, a story. And, and it's a story that has three parts. The first part of the story is what happened. And I think you've heard some of this already, and you know. So we had we had Paris, and, and it happened. Uh, and, and we had and governments around the world came together and, and made what is arguably the strongest commitment so far to fighting climate change. That's one piece of the story. Another piece of the story is that this same level of effort to stop climate change has been growing all around the world. So in the U.S., we've seen both uh, a, a, our government taking a much stronger commitment to climate change than, than any president we've had before. We've seen now, now in our country, in more than half of half of our states, it's just it's the same price to buy your electricity from renewable energy as it is from fossil fuels. And just a few years ago, that was unheard of. We, we never would have thought that that you could do that. And in a couple of years, it's expected to be 80 percent of our country. It's just as easy to get uh, renewable energy as it is from fossil fuels. That's tremendous. We're hearing Chinese state leaders saying that they don't see the, a future for electricity growth in China coming from fossil fuels, from coal, but rather from renewables. We're, we're seeing governments in the Middle East saying that even oil and petroleum can't be the only future for their countries. Those are things that we, we didn't hear just a few years. And the other big thing that we're seeing, which is part two of this story, is not just what happened, but who did it. And that's us. What we're also seeing is that people are getting up, they're getting active, and they're saying that the way we've done things can't be anymore. That, that the future, that the threat we face from climate change is too big, it's too important just to leave to governments to do, that it's actually going to be up to us to make the difference. And I think you've seen already, and you just heard, some of the growth of this movement in Malaysia. We're seeing this around the world. Um, a few years ago, where, I don't know where Adrian went to, but Adrian and I and a bunch of other young people uh, got together and created that youth uh, constituency at the climate change negotiations. Because we saw that that was a place where young people needed a voice, where, where we weren't represented, and where we had something important to say, both to our own governments and to everyone else around the world. So it's not just that governments agreed to something in Paris, it's that we made them agree to that. That we stood up and we made them take stronger action. And we're seeing people around the world do the same thing. The third part of this story is what needs to happen next. So Paris happened, but Paris won't be enough. Not even close. The, the dangers and the deaths that we face from climate change will continue to happen if we don't do more. It's not enough to say, okay, great, Paris, we're done. We need to do so much more. Um, it's not going to be an agreement that was reached there will, will not be even close to what is needed to stop serious climate change from happening around the world. As exciting as, as the growth of renewable energy is, uh, we still need a lot more of both young scientists as well as young activists to go out there and create the new technologies and to create the momentum and the passion in civil society to make those things happen, to change what governments are doing and, and to forge our own path. So we have to be part of writing that story and growing our own movement even beyond what we already have today. Because if we don't, it, it, we're not going to get to the kind of change that we truly so this moment right here, you being in this room, this is exactly what we need, and we actually need even more of it. So the next time there's a meeting like this, hopefully you and three of your friends are here uh, to make this movement even stronger. I mean, the Malaysian Youth Climate, the power shift in Malaysia has been tremendous. The Malaysian Youth Delegation, I mean, you've really brought the voice of Malaysian Youth to the world, and I, I've just been so impressed and so excited that every time that I've seen your delegation um, at the COPS, because, because you're really doing something Incredible. But we need more. We need more from, from me, from, from young people in the US. We need more from you. We have to talk about uh, what we can do to take this to the next level.
because there's so much more to do. We, you've heard the kinds of challenges that you face and the threats that you face here. People in civil society are facing those threats and those challenges from the fossil fuel industry, from governments that don't want to take enough action. Um, this will be hard. I don't want to make it sound like like it's going to be a simple effort. It's, it's going to be a tough road over the next couple of years. Paris wasn't the end of something. It was actually the beginning. And so what we need to figure out now is what we do next to take things to the next level, to take the successes that we have achieved, and double them, triple them, ten, tenfold over, because that's when we're going to get to the place where we really see a different world that looks more like us, that represents us, where the most vulnerable people around the world are not suffering the way that they are today and the way that, that they're on track to suffer if we don't take stronger action on climate change. So thank you for everything you've already done. Thanks for being here. I'm really excited to hear about what comes next, both for Malaysia and for the rest of the world.